My name is Dustin Newport. I'm a student at Texas State Technical College in the Computer Networking and Systems Administration program. Today I'll discuss with you how math is relevant in the computer systems field. When you think about computers, you probably don't think about math. You probably think about watching a YouTube video, maybe checking your email, or checking Facebook. But at the heart of that is math. Uh, the first way that math is relevant in the computer systems field is programmers. They have to write programming and write code. Most of that is based in math. Uh, computers, they don't understand words. You can't, you know, just type a word into your computer, computer open this. It won't. Programmers, they have to translate commands that would be in words into a language that computers understand. That language is binary. Binary is pretty simple. Just ones and zeros. The zeros tell the computer not to send a current somewhere onto the system board. And the ones tell the computer to send a current somewhere on the system board. That's amazing. Just ones and zeros. Send a current here. Don't send a current here. You get everything. Word processing. You know, taking these videos all by ones and zeros. The second way that math is relevant in the computer systems field is when you do subnetting and IP addressing. When you have a computer on a network, it needs to be able to tell the other computers and router where it's at on the network. It does so with an IP address. An IP address is a set of four numbers that tell the other things where it's located at on the network. I have a IP address right here. This one is 255.255. .255 .154.0. That translates into a binary number, which I have right here. Bet you're wondering how that translates into that. It's actually pretty simple. Uh, IP addressing is done to the power of 2. I've done the math out here just to save some time, but you start with 1, and then you go to 2. 2. And then you go 2 to the power of 2, and then so on forth down the line. Then you'll look at this. I've singled out the 154 on the network. So you'll start at the far end with the 128, and you'll look. Is 128 less than or equal to 154, which it is, so you'll put a 1. And then you'll look at the next number, the 64. You'll add the 128 to the 64, and you'll get 192, which is greater than the 154, so you'll put a 0. You do the same thing with the 32, which is turns out to 160, which is greater than the 154, you'll put a 0. You'll add the 16 to the 128, and it'll give you 144, which is less than the 154, so you'll put a 1. Then you'll move on to the 8. So you'll add 8 to 144, which will give you 152, which is less than the 154, so you'll put a 1. You'll add the 4 to the 152, which will give you 156, which is greater than the 154, so you'll put a 0. You'll add the 2 to the 152, which will give you 154, so you'll put a 1. Since you already have the 154, you'll put a 0 for the 1, so it won't go over. And that translates in to this part right here. So it would be 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And you can do that with all of these and it'll all work out. In closing, uh, computers are easy. We just turn them on and we start surfing a web, maybe making a Word document or watching a YouTube video. And we seem to forget about all of the math evolved in the background to bring us those things. Uh, thank you for your time and uh, good night.